And... And then... No! no! Why they had to do him like that? But they're also cool. A sad backstory could turn a pretty boring character into a beloved character within seconds. The yeah. empathy we feel for the character connects us. Yeah. They don't necessarily have it's to true. be just like us or go through the same things we did. Like, I know I didn't come from space and my clan definitely didn't get massacred, but I'm still both of these people and these people and these people. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be going over that. some of the saddest backstories in history. Backstories so sad, they'll give you clinical oh, depression. No. Like take for instance- Don't don't go to that Anakin. I don't wanna see the Anakin. <laughs> Said Drake? Now, you know Naruto, you know it has some sad backstories. Every single one of these dudes went through something traumatic in their childhood. And that's yeah. no exaggeration. Naruto had it's a true. demon locked in him. Sasuke lost his whole, whole clan. Village. Choji was fat. Everybody went through it. All these dudes got Marvin's room and 17 on repeat but amongst that all is crazy though now that, you, now that he like really speak on it all the motherfuckers really went through some shit except i think sakura and a few others but everybody else really went through some shit as a kid really super sad and she all gotta be traumatized the saddest one has to go to my boy itachi now kakashi oh, is yeah. pretty sad too i can't lie but i think itachi's is a little sad he got too much on his shoulders he really, at a young age, Itachi had too much on his shoulders. He was born in the middle of the Third Great Ninja War, which is like being born in World War II. He was a very gifted child. They say he had the reasoning of Hokage at the age of seven. And have y'all seen my boy cooking egg? And while one might see these talents as a blessing, they were also a curse, because they eventually led to him joining a group called the Anbu at the very young age of 11. And if y'all ain't know, the crazy. people in the Anbu are no bueno. They pretty much did all the dirty and evil work for the Leaf Village. They're kind of like some organizations in real life. So being in a group like that at the age of 11 is insane when i was 11 gta 5 had just come out and i was still too scared to go to the big hill place on the map by myself there's no <laughs> way i would have been able to hang imagine being in the freaking ninja cia and not only Crazy. that but bro became the captain of them at the age of 13 so you know he had to handle some way darker and way Man. more messed up missions and that leads us to the saddest part of Itachi's backstory, the massacre of his entire clan. And the worst part is it was all done by him. Well, some was done by Obito, but it was mainly him. And while this might look terrible on paper, cause you know, you can't exactly- It, it is terrible, but really to be honest, bro, he had to do it. The Hokages and them made him do this. If it wasn't for them, he wouldn't have had to kill his family bro like come on as a, as a kid he practically had no choice he was 13 at the time and he hated war so when this ugly crusty old piece of shanzo gave itachi an ultimatum his hands were pretty much tied he pretty much told him he could either murk his entire clan and save his brother while also preventing a war or they'll do it themselves and obviously we know what he chose and that's what makes this the saddest one in naruto Crazy. he couldn't do nothing about it he killed his mom his dad his girl his girl bro his girl that's and tough. it's not like anybody knows how noble he is at that's the end tough. of the show i'm pretty sure 99.9 percent .9 of the cast except maybe neji because you know thinks itachi is a horrible person and they're not completely wrong he did torture sasuke and merc innocent children but it was to protect <laughs> y'all sorry butts and y'all sorry ass future it, man that's crazy it's too sad. That's this crazy. sad stuff is a common occurrence in anime like take the goat of sad backstories for example demon slayer this show is so good at giving people tragic backstories it makes you feel bad for objectively bad people people who yeah. have killed hundreds if not thousands of innocents you start shedding a tear for them now imagine we replace one of these demons with a bad person from our world like bill cosby <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? That junk would not fly in the real world. Not a single tear will be shed. The show Little Bill could have been a foreseen explanation of how much Bill Cosby's life sucked. And still, I'm not crying. Only way I even consider, consider even feeling a little bad for him is if he has a backstory like my boy Carl from Up. Now this old man, not only have I- I never, wa I never watched this. I never watched this. Was this good? Was Up good? I never watched it. And a tear for him, but he could commit almost any crime and I'm forgiving him. He could be stealing candy from a baby. Leak GTA 6. He could rob me. I'm forgiving him. I kind of want him to leak GTA 6. I need that. I am a thousand percent sure when the producers of this movie finished those first 12 minutes, they were like, yep.
they're gonna need antidepressants after this one. So we open with this little kid in the theater. That's our boy Carl. And since he's still a kid, he still has all that passion, that dream big mentality that we all had as kids. True. Now I'm just trying to make it through the day. And while some kids want to be astronauts, ninjas, y'all know, all that cool stuff, Carl, he wants to be an adventurer, a pilot. And one day while walking, he hears a voice coming from this abandoned house. And when he gets in there, he meets this girl named Ellie, who is probably the most passionate and energetic little girl in existence. Like, she's actually a little crackhead. But she loves adventuring, and that was enough for my boy Carl to fall in love. Uh -oh. Carl eventually makes a promise to Ellie to travel to paradise falls with her, and this little promise was the start of their relationship. They get married, they buy a house, they fix the house, they go what? on picnic dates, they work with parents. Uh -oh. Parents, ladies and gentlemen, parents. Everything was going splendid. Eventually, they want to have a baby, or nine babies that's cool too but sadly they end up losing the baby or all Ooh. nine of them i don't know this scene is actually so sad but carl being the w husband that he is cheers ellie up by reminding her of paradise falls and that promise they made as kids and that one little reminder changed everything they start grinding stacking up that paper oh snap a tire blew up no biggie we'll just get back on track i mean that's life bro as soon as you as soon as you you patch everything you get everything good Boom, something else pops up just to fuck it all up. It's good. We just got to adjust. We got to. With all these setbacks, they eventually forget about Paradise Falls and become two adorable old people. But one day, Carl is reminded of Paradise Falls again, and it makes him feel sad that he was never able to fulfill his promise to his wife. And that's when he gets an amazing idea. My boy gets them two tickets to Paradise Falls, their dream so close to being fulfilled. But as Ellie is coming up the hill to get her gift, she collapses. And what? then we see her and Carl in the house. Oh, okay. She, she and then, it. and then... No. no! Why they had to do him like that? Oh, no. You're a victim. Mm. <sighs> no, no, no. Nah, this that's sad, bro. This his whole life they just wanted to go to this par paradise fall place, and then boom, it's over with in the blink of an eye. That's sick. Oh. Why That's they it. had to do him like that, man? She That's didn't even it. get to go to Paradise Falls. Now my boy Carl is lonely. Damn. This movie makes me look at bitter old people in a different light. So next time you're out shopping, you see an old white lady just mean mugging you or saying mean things or following you through the aisles, don't assume the worst. Be considerate, guys. She's probably just racist or lost her husband. I don't know. <laughs> Some of y'all might the, one of the two, huh? recognize this image. And if you do, I feel you. And those who don't, it's from the short three minute video that was posted 10 years ago. Damn! And while I may not have as many views as the movie Up, it's debatably sadder. Kind of like Up, we follow this boy and girl who meet after the boy protects the girl from a bunch of bullies. He still yeah. gets beat up, but it's sweet. Then on the boy's birthday, after no one shows up, the girl does with a birthday card. And the boy hey. is so happy. And it's the sweetest w. thing ever. I mean, look at it. After that, we watch them grow up together. From kids to teens to adults. Wowzers. And as you can see, they're dating. These two are in love, ladies and gentlemen. He even gets her a dog. Things are going so perfect, you kind of forget the title of this video is Life Isn't Perfect. And we learned that very soon. Anyways, they eventually get married. W's in the shot. And if you pause it right here, you can see she's pregnant. W's hey. in the shot. Aw, come on. Just like in Up, these two sadly lost their baby. Yo, what's up with that? Oh, I'm sick of seeing that. But in this case, they decided to adopt. And I'm not gonna lie, call me Ed, but for some reason, first time I watched this, I thought the dog was gonna eat the kid. I, I don't know. And again, everything is going good with the family. Things are beautiful. Things are magnificent. Maybe life really is per- Oh, not the- Oh, uh. come on. They killed the dog, man. The dog. What the dog? This is normally the point Damn. where I would start crying, but it gets worse. A few years go by and the dad gets a call that his wife has the Walter White disease. And to make things oh, even no. worse than worse, they don't have enough money to pay for the treatment because, you know, medical system. But the dad gets an opportunity to make Damn. a lot of money. The only catch is it's the military. So he says bye to his kid and his wife and he's shipped off into the battlefield. Y'all know how war goes. His friend is shot first and when Ooh. things are looking extremely grim, he sits down and pulls out his pocket the birthday card his wife gave him when they were kids and then he just dies he uh. dies and it ends with his kid as an adult and his family at the cemetery where we see his wife died too Damn. Uh. 
This is easily one of the saddest nah, videos that's, on the that's internet. That's and it's up. crazy because it's so sad. But it's still not sadder than the last person I have on this list. It all began on the day of my actual birth. Oh, they try to make us, what's good, Jay? When it comes to sad backstories, nobody has anything on this man. Not Itachi, not Carl, not Guts. This man. I don't think I've seen his backstory. Do oh, oh, Doc here? I don't think I've seen his backstory before. And has truly gone through it all. Doof was born in the very brown country of Jusselstein, where both his parents failed to show up to his birth. I, I don't know. Don't ask that's, me how. That's Doof crazy. didn't have the best childhood. On top of being constantly bullied, Doof was a very lonely kid. He had no one to look to. Only things he really looked forward to were his garlic ice cream and his giant pet cockroach. Even on his birthday, Ugh. the day you're supposed to feel like the most special That person. nigga was in the trenches. That nigga had a pet cockroach? Oh my god. God. And in the world, he would have to throw himself a surprise birthday party. What's the surprise? That no one showed up again? And one might wonder, well, where are his parents? They surely should be around. Doof's parents freaking suck. They're actually no. terrible. Top three worst in cartoon history. And Damn. they take up two slots. But this isolation he experienced could have played a big part on why Doof was so smart. This kid was a genius. A Drusselstein Einstein. So when it was finally time to display that intelligence at the Drusselstein Science Fair, there was no way he could lose. I mean, look at his innators. Like, who, who is he going to lose to? But losing the science fair was only a small L. Not only because he lost again next year with his bigger innator, but because what happened at the game. <laughs> nigga lose. Nigga got this whole innator gun losing to a volcano. <laughs> the community pool was much worse. You see, jumping oh, from the high shit. dive and Gimmel Stump was an extremely big deal for uh -uh, some reason. Don't it do was that. separated you from being a man and a schnitzel. So when Deuce died, told him it was his turn to do it, Doof was too scared. He couldn't jump. All those people looking at him, which really wasn't a lot of people, it was like three. It terrified him, made him nervous. And from that point on, he was deemed a schnitz. His parents were so embarrassed, Damn. they wore bags over their heads anytime they were seen oh. in public with him. And he wasn't even allowed That's to- That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Your parents gotta wear a bag in public if you with them. That's crazy. Walk too close to them. This created an even bigger gap between Doof and his already negligent, dumb, stupid, retarded parents. So it was no surprise. When his dad got an award-winning dog, he named it Only Son. Around this time was also Damn. when Doof started doing no work for his family. He would stand no. out there for hours on end. In the cold, in the snow, in uh -huh. the heat. Not allowed to move. Not Everybody allowed to this. eat. They had my mans out here like one of those dudes in Times Square. This was also, also around the time when his little brother was born. And while having siblings should be a ray of hope when you're an only child, especially in Doof's case because he was really lonely, it kind of made Doof's life worse. And not like how having a sibling normally does. I mean, like his parents borderline hated him after Roger was born. They would send him to school in dresses because oh, they were expecting that's a girl. Then it helped that Roger was pretty much naturally good at the only thing his mom loved, kickball. At some point, they literally disowned Doof. And he had to live with Ocelots, the cats from Minecraft. What the fuck? This is really messed up stuff. The only highlight in Doof's life at this point was Balloon, who was a balloon that Doof got at the carnival and he painted a face on it. That sounds so sad. And that's while Balloon may have had no arms, no legs, the inability to speak, no personality, Doof loved him. That was his best friend they were locked in but alas just like everything else in Doof's life this happiness didn't last very long on one fateful night when he was doing his typical gnome duty by the way his family took him back in at this point so no confusion balloon he started getting blown away by the wind no Doof couldn't move. He, he was on gnome <laughs> duty and just like that balloon hey, what is he saying <laughs> Don't move or something. The wind. And Doof couldn't move. He, he was on gnome duty. And just like that, Balloonie was gone. Never to be seen Hey, again. that's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's it's fucked just, up, but hilarious at the same so time. Sad. And that was only his childhood. In his teenage years, Doof still got bullied, went through Damn. breakups, had braces. Braces? Braces suck. I had them. And probably the worst Anybody of all. Anybody had braces and never had them. Are they annoying? Are they bad? What's good, DJ? In his teenage years, while he was doing the shadow puppetry show, which he was actually really good at, by the way, so good that he would get attention from girls in the crowd. He got his girl taken away by- What's up with this nigga hands? Lord jeez. What's going on? With this nigga look like he got the- You remember them Hulk hands from the store when we were kids? Look like he got them hoes on and he just spray painted them hoes. Huge hands Hans. A guy Huge hands with Hans. bigger <laughs> fingers than him. Do y'all see what they're implying? Oh, Looks like that's it's freaky. Just L after L after L. Kind of like my goat. I mean, even in adulthood, he was dating this girl at some point that left him for a whale. Oh, that's sick. A whale. This man would have every right in the world to hate society. Or at the very least, his parents, they suck. But he doesn't. I mean, he is hey. evil, but his evil isn't really that big of a deal. He usually does something stupid or unserious, like the Bredonator or something. Like, 
who cares? Doof doesn't let what his parents or society did to him impact how he treats the people he loves. That's why he's such a great dad to Vanessa. He knows what it means to not celebrate your birthday. He knows what it means to struggle. He knows what it means to get out the mud. He, he might be from the Bronx. A lot of people like to use that as a crutch. Oh, I was mistreated, so now I gotta mistreat you. Everybody ah, else. Yeah. We're fully functional humans. We're not input output machines. We gotta break the cycles. Everyone gotta be more like Doof. He's not out here being negligent. He's not out here bullying people. I would say he doesn't seek revenge, but, but sometimes he does. I'll be honest but overall he's a stand-up guy respect it now other dimension doof his backstory i understand why he's so evil he has every right to hate the world burn oh, it oh. burn it all down <laughs> comment down below which backstory you thought was the saddest or Jeez. if i missed any other sad backstories i know one piece has a few but uh i ain't reading all that and moral <laughs> of the story that's just a theory okay theory oh, oh yeah he gone man no that was good Derek.